offensive game. You know, although he hasn't been able to extend his range this year, you know, Patino just kind of said at one point, you know, just do what you do best. You know, I think when NBA teams look at Jordan Murphy, you know, even if he improved his jump shot this year, they're never going to say, oh, like, this guy is going to be um, a great outside shooter as a, as a, as a, in a stretch four. Mm-hmm. You know, he was going to be a, a down, a, a low post, uh, you know, banger, um, you know, rim rocker and rebounder. And, you know, defensively, uh, if he can hold his own, it helps as well. That was going to be his role at the next level, whether it's in the NBA or overseas or wherever he plays professionally. Uh-huh. And if you see if you see teams, uh, you know, make a run in the in the in, in March, it's all about having pros on the team. And and Jordan Murphy was definitely a pro on Friday. You know, I mean, he battled against the seven foot three center in Matt Harms. You know, the kind of length he's going to see, they'll see he would see in the NBA or just at the next level, even more so. And uh, he, you know, obviously he finished. He went to the line. He was he was uh, you know got guys. Uh, <laughs> got guys' bodies on some dunks. Um, you know, I think that that's just the way that Jordan Murphy can affect the game offensively. You know, sometimes he get, maybe he gets carried away a little bit because they leave him open to try to shoot jumpers. But really, it all comes down to him being a, a beast in the post. And uh, when he does that, uh, like you said, this team is just uh, takes it to another level. Yeah, and, and uh, he is just, I mean, when you watch this guy go, I, you don't realize how high he gets off off the ground. I mean, he's only, what would you say he is, Marcus? Six, seven, six, eight tops? Like, what is he when you see him? Because I'm always curious. Well, with his hair, he's six, seven. Ah, uh, with his hair. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and, and, you know, he talks about shoes. The thing is, like, you know, if he gets invited to the NBA Combine, they're going to measure him without shoes. Like, I don't even know why they measure guys without shoes. You don't play without shoes. Right, right. So you should only measure a guy with shoes. And and then, you know, I mean, obviously you don't want him to have high heels on, but, like, I mean, <laughs> you know, normal shoes, measure the guy and see what he and see what his height is. And I'm, I'm guessing Jordan's a little bit over six foot six. All right. Okay, with shoes on. So that without shoes, yeah, he's, on, he's probably under six foot six, maybe six, five and a half. But he's playing with shoes. The kid's over six feet, six foot six. Okay, he's not a kid anymore, but you know what I mean? But he's got a seven foot wingspan and he has quick leaping ability. Yes, now, that's what I was trying all, to say. Right. Yeah, not all players, you know, you just measure like the vertical jump. I mean, obviously, Zion Williamson, 45 inch vertical, quick leaping. He's got the wingspan, he's got, got the size and strength, everything. But not all guys have like 40 something inch verticals and are, willing, are can, able to dunk on you at will. You know, Jordan had, I don't know what his vertical is, he, he never told us his vertical, but he's a quick leaper. And he has a seven foot wingspan, so you're, you're talking about a guy. Just think of a seven footer out there that can get to the rim in a hurry. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to jump that high to dunk. And if he's got a seven foot wingspan, you're talking about a seven footer. You know, even though he's six five, six six, that can dunk on you within a blink of an eye. You know, and that's Jordan Murphy. And so I think people, you know, look at his height and they they kind of don't expect that. Um, but he is like a seven footer out there when it comes to, to attacking the rim. And, you know, he can, he's just a quick leaper and it helps with his rebounding as well. And he, he's just a, a fun player to watch. I remember as, him as a freshman, all the highlights he had. And, you know, he was putting up 18, 19 rebound games, even coming off the bench. And I thought, man, this is going to be a special, special player. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, fortunate to be able to cover him for four years. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, I, I wanted to sort of get into the seating aspect of things. I know we all look at Lenardi and Paul, Palmer's bracket and all that, but I want to get your opinion. If the Gophers win today, what do you think their seed looks like? Do they get past a? Um, I, I know a lot of them have to like a seven through ten range, eight through ten range. What happens if they win today? What do you think the seed is? What do you think the seed is if they lose today? Yeah, I love Jerry Palm. I love Phil Lenardi. I wrote a story about him and hung out with him in Philadelphia. If you want to check that out on my Twitter page. But, uh, you know, I think these guys uh, are great at what they do. Um, I like to look at the bracket matrix, which has like 100 or so brackets, you know, all over the Internet. Yep. And obviously, you know, we know they're in. They're, they're in 111 out of the 111 brackets. They have, but I, I was looking at the seed range, and it, like like you said, it's from about seven to some 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 guys don't even know what they're talking about. They have them as twelve seed. They probably just didn't up their, update their bracket for 
the last few days. But, <laughs> but you know, I think that realistically, if they win this game, I think Joe and, and Jerry Palm have said that you know each win is like half a seed line. You know, um, you know, right now they're they're in between uh, a nine and a, and a ten seed uh, on average. So I think you know they go up. The pick could probably they'll go up to an eight. In my opinion, if they win this game, what people what people don't realize as well is, is uh, you know the selection committee have already they've already obviously have go, the Gophers in the tournament. They had them in already before they beat Penn State, I think. And, really, uh, a lot of people. And so it was a matter of like how high could get, could they go in seating, right? So I think you know they had the Gophers in, but they had them as a. Uh, I, mean, I don't know anybody on the committee, but I'm guessing they had them you know as a as a low 11 seed, you know before they beat Penn State. So you, you you know you take each win into account, right? And so you know they beat Penn State. You know they go up, you know between t- a ten and an eleven seed, right? And then you know they beat Purdue. Um, they go up, you know, to about a, a nine and a half, uh, you know, high ten seed. Uh-huh. So you know if they win another game, so you're talking still about a ninth seed, but maybe just a little bit higher than that. So you know between an eight and a nine. So I just don't see them moving up too much. You know, this doesn't, doesn't happen in a bubble. You know, people just look at Minnesota, who they're beating in the Big Ten. But, you know, we're talking about a lot of teams out there that have been doing great things in college basketball this year. And some that haven't, and that were, you know, top five, top six, seven seeds that are just falling. And, you know, we have to take those into account as well. You know, and that, that's the eight, nine games a scary game because not only do you play the number one seed in the second round if you win, but I think a lot of the eight nines, you know, they're not like Minnesota where they're winning to get up to that spot. Right. A lot of these teams are, are really good teams, like top fifth, top ten, top fifteen teams, like even in Nevada, that are just losing. You know, yeah. and all of a sudden they just end up in that eight nine spot because the committee is like, well, we can't reward them with like a top five, six, seven seed because they're just not playing that well right now. You know what I mean? So. Um, it's just all about the matchup, but I think they've proven so far in this tournament that they're playing at the, their highest level right now, and I think they can win an NCAA tournament game. Oh, I do too. I think, oh, listen, like you said, it's all about matchups. Like, the Gophers match up well against a team like Iowa, they, you know, but they don't match up well against a team like Penn State, even though they did beat them. It's just all about matchups in the tournament. And just going back, and I, I was going to ask you this, if they would have lost to Penn State, I didn't really like the mentality that Patino kind of took going into it, to be honest with you. When he said, you know, we're in, you know, we don't have to, it's okay, we don't have to win a game. I don't, I don't particularly like that, but like he said, I guess, in the presser or the uh, <laughs> when they were in the locker room that he was lying or whatever, so I was okay with that. But last thing before we let you go, I feel like every team needs some form of motivation or inspiration. And I think the Gophers found that in that nobody really talks about them. And I think Patino did say that yesterday is nobody talks about us. And I think that gives this team a chip on their shoulder. Do you believe that that's motivation for teams like the Gophers? Well, I, I you know, Coach is really honest. You know, he's, he's just honest that way. And, uh, you know, sometimes, like you said, it it might not, you know, be the best thing to have a team think they're in before they, you know, they, they play the, in a Big Ten tournament. But obviously it worked. But uh, I think... You know, Patino probably feels that way a lot about this team. Um, I think he, you know, he, he pays attention a lot to what's being said about him and what, what's being said about the Gophers. Uh, I don't think the players, you know, really care all that much. Actually, you know, he talked about how humble they are. You know, they don't pound their chest about like, hey, we deserve this, we deserve that. I think there's a couple players on the team that were uh, frustrated with the All Big Ten teams. <laughs> you know, yeah. Daniel Tura and Amir Coffee probably thought they should have been higher, whereas a tour probably thought he should have been on the all-freshman team. But, you know, as far as their team is concerned, I think they just like like playing with each other. You know, I think they they just have fun playing with each other. I think the seniors, uh, they're playing for the seniors. You know, Jordan's been an awesome player in four years here, uh, all-time great. Uh, Dupree's been through a lot this year with his mom passing, and, you know, they just, it's incredible what, um, what kind of resilience he's been able to have this year. Um, and so, I, and then Mott Stockman and Brock Stowe as well. They haven't been around a long time, but you know those guys are great teammates. And, and even when they weren't playing, they were they were rooting on their uh, their their teammates. So I think they're playing for the seniors. I think they're playing for each other. Uh, I think they obviously believe in what uh, the talent that they have. And I think that's just all within the, the program and within the team. You know, I, I don't know if the players really care too much about. 
what's going on on the outside because you know the coaching staff has always told them to like ignore the noise because as you know like in Minnesota there can be a lot of negativity yeah. out there especially when you lose so I don't think they pay attention too much to um, all what's going on outside and they, they kind of keep it internal as far as their motivation. Well, they're an easy team to cheer for, I'll tell you that. They are fun. They're right now hot, and we will watch them today. I think it's 3 o'clock, 3.30 my time, Eastern time, 2.30 uh, Central yep. time. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll be, we'll, one this time. we'll definitely time. be watching this one. Marcus, thank you so much for giving me the time. As always, great job. All right, appreciate it. Wanted to get into a little Vikes before we end the show today. Haven't really done much in free agency. The big news, I guess, and out here in New York – was Jet fans were fired up for Anthony Barr. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I wasn't devastated when he went to the New York Jets. You know, Anthony Barr has been an up-and-down player. I don't think that the Vikings, Mike Zimmer, or really fans think that he's reached his potential. We always feel like there's something left in the tank because you see him one week and you're like, wow, this 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 guy can be one of the best linebackers in the league. And then you think, wow, he can't cover Todd Gurley on a wheel route. So there is a lot of things that went on in this, and I guess Anthony Barr said this was. It felt like I married the wrong woman going down the aisle, and that was kind of harsh. So he is taking a bunch of heat out out here in New York. I mean, the the radio out here is killing him at the fan. There is a lot of things going on about Anthony Barr, and and I'll be honest with you, I I don't know. Did they overpay for him? And I, I as you know, I'll just be broad here. You know, I don't know what they can pretty much do this offseason other than nail the draft because they are so handcuffed with these contracts and Kirk Cousins is the culprit right now they just really don't have any way to uh, maneuver types of deals with these guys I think at this point a lot of players want to get paid and I think you saw that which kind of brings me to my next question here for you guys is did the Vikings window to win a Super Bowl, is it gone? I, I mean, you're starting to lose pieces. And listen, I'm not losing sleep over losing Andrew Sandeo. But there's kind of a trend that's been going on in the NFL. And, and obviously the Patriots are your exception. Is that you sort of have to win on your quarterback's rookie deal. You see what happened with Russell Wilson. You see what happened with some of these other guys. Because once you have to sign your quarterback, there's not a lot of things you can do. Like, I'm looking at the Kansas City Chiefs. They better win these next two years because you know Mahomes, is he's going to be the highest paid quarterback in the league in two years. Maybe next year they're already talking about a, 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 a new contract. So, do the Vikings have a chance? Because obviously they are not good enough right now. Their offensive line is not good enough. They're going to lose Remmers. They lost some other pieces. They better make sure they know what they're doing in the draft or, or do something in free agency. But I just don't know what they can do. How are they going to have leverage at this point? You're a team that just missed out on the playoffs at 8 7 and 1. Um, you know, I wanted to see them go after Golden Tate, but he ended up going to the Giants. What's next for the Vikings? Because what can you do at this point? I don't know. There were some rumors about Endomic and Sue because obviously Sheldon Richardson is gone. Anderson Deo is gone. Xavier Rhodes is getting older. I know they're kind of trying to shop Trey Waynes right now. You kind of got to ask yourself, man, did this window already pass? Was last year the year to win it with this team? And the defense didn't play that well. But you lost pieces. And this is going to be, a, I think, a make it or break it year for Mike Zimmer. I, I think that they don't make the playoffs and they have the year they had last year. I don't know if he's here next year. I don't know if Kirk Cousins is going to work with Mike Zimmer his final year in his contract. Because remember, it's a three-year deal. It's a three-year window to win a Super Bowl. Maybe it passed after this year because they just completely took a step back. And I've always said it, there is zero correlation from one NFL season to another perfect example the Minnesota Vikings who are in the NFC championship the next year they didn't even make the playoffs the Jacksonville Jaguars who beat the Steelers who beat the Bills with Blake Bortles was in the AFC championship a year later Blake Bortles is cut and he doesn't have a job right now and the Jags don't know who their quarterback's going to be There is zero correlation from one year to another. And maybe this can work in the Vikings' favor next year because of how... 